Welcome to Biology Access. In today's video, I'll be talking about population genetics. If you, know, if you know you are new to this channel, please kindly subscribe and press the like um, button as well as comment if you love this video. Population genesis actually describe the genetic differences that occur within or among different world population as well as the factors that affect this. It actually consists of two terms population and genetics as we know it, population describe when we talk about population in biology it describe individual of the same species that can interbreed in a particular world, environment or habitat why genetics as you know is the study of what hereditary and variation so population genetics is concerned with the genetic variations that actually occur within a population or among the population as well as those factors that influence these genetic variations. So when studying population genetics, there is this foundation principle that we have, and it's actually the word Hadi Weberg principle or equilibrium, Hadi Weberg principle or law theory or equilibrium as they call it. It simply states, what is Hadi Weberg principle? It simply states that the genetic variation in a, in a population will what remain constant from generation to generation, provided destructive world forces are actually absent or in the absence of destructive forces when we talk about genetic variation within population we are talking about the genotype and the phenotype word frequency the uh, uh, sorry the genotype frequency as well as the allelic word frequency these are some of the things that actually varies within a population so if the a genotype frequency as well as the allele frequency in a population will remain constant from one generation to the next. The um, population is said to what be at what had the what we bear what equilibrium. Now we are talking about in the absence of disruptive word forces. What are these disruptive forces? They include natural selection or selection as we put it, gene flow, genetic drift, and all that. In subsequent video, I will explain this term as well as some other aspects of population genetics. So let's just take a look at the Hardy-Weberg word principle explained in an equation. This is the Hardy-Weberg word equation. P square. The P usually represents what? The dominant allele. The Q represents what? The uh, recessive word, allele word frequency. So P, which is the allele frequency for the dominant gene, Q, Allele frequency for the recessive gene. If you add both of them, you always have what one, or do you say you make up what hundred or percent? If you want to express it in percentage, let's take a look at a particular example. Let's assume that, as usual, we use a tall pea plant. This is the gene for the dominant gene for a tall pea plant. This is the recessive gene, and if we have this organism, this is a tall pea plant. So. This is the gene for the dominant, and this is the gene for the recessive word, or the short gene. This is tall gene, and this is short gene. We can assume also that this is the allele for the tall trait, and this is the allele for what? The short word trait. So we can realize that I'm putting that P is representing T, and Q is representing what? The short word allele. Now, how is this important? Let's go back to the equation. You realize that this equation is giving p squared equals, equals to 2pq plus u squared plus q squared equals to 1. If I carry out this cross, I will realize I have this. I have two of these, which is 2 pq this is p square this is 2pq which is the same thing as two of this two of t and finally we have this which is what q square everything is equal to one everything together is make up what 100 what percent i'll just use a little this um principle is actually apply when you are calculating or when you are um Calculate. You can use to predict the number of individuals in the population that have a particular frequency or the number of individuals that have a particular word, genotype. 
a number of individuals that have a particular allelic word frequency or and all that. So let's just take a little example. Today is an introductory class. In our subsequent video, I'll post a detailed explanation regarding the application of the adware principle as well as explaining this evolutionary word factor. Today is just an introductory aspect of the video. So let's take a look at this. Let's assume, assuming that the allelic frequency of T is 0.7. Calculate the allelic frequency of this uh, recessive gene, which is the gene for. We know from the equation that P plus Q is equal to 1. And if in this case, if in this case we are assuming that P is 0 0.7 and you are being asked to calculate the allelic frequency of this recessive trait, how will I get it? I have 0 0.7 plus q equals to 1. In this case, q equals to, if I take this across the equal to sign, it becomes minus, minus 0 0.7. And q automatically becomes 0 0.3. 1 minus 0 0.7, you have your answer as 0 0.3. Now, you can still work for that. If we assume, for example, that the total population in, in this community, for example, is 10,000, um, 10, I can ask you, Calculate the, number of, uh, calculate the number of individuals that have this gene. Number of individuals that have this gene and number of individuals that have this gene. It is simple. First, you have to know that this gene is the same thing as P square from using the Hadoubert Had principle. This is double T. This is 2PQ, which represents 2T. And this is Q square, which, which represents small t equal to 1. So, knowing the fact that this, to get the genotype frequency for this, we just use square the value of this. The allelic frequency is this. So, what is the genotype frequency? This was the square of this, p square. So, we have 0 0.7 square. Now, this will give us 0 0.49. This is not the answer. You use it to multiply the total population times what? Times 10,000. And what will be my answer? 1, 2. So my answer should be 4,700. You can use your calculator to verify that. Now, if you are asked to calculate the number of individuals that have this genotype in the whole population, it's simple. Using this, you know that T and this is this. So we simply apply, we simply simply just apply this to the formula. We have 2 times P, 0 0.7 times Q, 0 0.3. We have equals to 0 0.42 times, to get the number of individuals that have this genotype in this population, just multiply times the total population. So we now have 4,200. Now, the last one is the number of individuals with this. So, in this case, we also apply the same formula. This is Q squared, which is the small, this, this is the value for Q is 0 0.3. So, we have 0 0.3 squared. And our answer is 0 0.09 times 1, 10,000. We now have 900 as our answer. Now, if you want to get or you want to verify if your answer is correct or not, how will you do that? Just add the total answer and see if you get this. If you add this and this and this together, you realize that our final answer is 10,000, meaning that we have our final answer. So, this is just an introductory part. In our subsequent video, I'll give you various types of calculation that you can see, as well as explain the various facts of social that influence or that can affect population that can bring about change in genetic variation. Thank you. If you know you have any question, you can drop it in the comment section. Thank you.